Hey everybody, welcome back to the Fish Tank. I'm Fish and today I thought it'd be fun to have a look at the Milloween rework that dropped in the latest patch for Midia Masters. Now, this is a big rework and I've seen a lot of people ever since this was first suggested as a rework, uh, all the way up until the patch dropping, I've seen people on Steam, in-game, on Reddit, just everywhere in the Discord, just suggesting that this change is gonna kill Milloween. Milloween is gonna go from one of the best masters or the better masters to just straight up the worst master. Now, I didn't specifically agree with them. I wanted to really see what the the, uh, the changes were more like in the game than just on paper. Uh, so I kind of gave myself a bit of a challenge to see if we could still make Milloween viable. So anyway, in today's video, we're going to look at the, what the changes were, and then we're going to have a look at how they um, manifest themselves on the battlefield in some gameplay. Okay, so here we have the new Milo. So I've got my notes on my second screen because there's a lot that I want to remember. So Milloween has changed a lot. Let's see if we can go through and just clarify the changes. Okay, so uh, one thing I want to mention is that the, the description in the game is not the best and it doesn't quite agree with how the patch notes describe things, some different wordage, which is a little bit confusing. So we'll try to clarify that here. Um, so her basic attack, right? She fires three arcane sparks at a nearby enemy. An arcane spark does 10 damage, five DPS each. <clears throat> okay. Every time you cast a spell, she gains what I've always seen referred to as an arcane charge. Now the in-game description doesn't mention arcane charges. And in my patch notes video, I kind of decided to refer to them as bonus sparks. Uh, but I think, I think the correct verbiage is arcane charge. That's what we've seen in the patch notes, and we'll probably see an upgrade update to the description at some point. Okay, so every time you cast a spell, she gains an arcane charge. That does two things. Firstly, whilst you have the charge um, built up, and just to note, you can build up up to five arcane charges. So that means five spells. Um, whilst you have a charge built up. That charge empowers her also attack. So as we mentioned, she starts with three arcane sparks. She gets an extra spark for each arcane charge that you've got built up. So you can empower a basic attack up to eight arcane sparks. So that's three to start with, plus the five extra from the charges you've built up using spells. So that empowers her basic attack massively. So her basic attack can go up to 80 damage, 40 DPS, which makes it to when it's fully charged one of the best uh, auto attacks in the game. Remember the way the targeting works for her sparks is they will randomly hit something that's in range. Okay, so that's the first part of the arcane charges, powering up her basic attack. Now, the second part of this is the arcane golem. When you spawn your arcane golem, any of the arcane charges that you've built up are consumed by that golem and it gains a level per charge. So remember, you can build up to five arcane charges. So that means your golem can spawn up to level five, depending on how much uh, you have, how many charges you have built up. So basically what happens is you empower an auto attack, then you spawn the golem, all of those charges get consumed, your auto attack drops back down to the regular level, the three sparks, and then you start building up the charges again. So the arcane golem is changing a lot as well. So some very big changes to the golem. It can no longer hit air. It's a ranged minion, but only can hit ground. And it, although it's a ranged minion, it has a much shorter range. Previously, it had a range of eight. Now it has a range of four. Additionally, um, a couple of changes. It's no longer mythic. Remember, we, it was made mythic to kind of stop the, uh, the issue where you had multiple golems out, which is kind of really, really strong. So it's no longer mythic, which means that it can be moved around with things like the Impetus Blast. It no longer gets protection from things like um, Arcane Bolt, something like that, uh, if, if the situation arises. <clears throat> now, additionally, it is on a timer. Now, Milloween's Golem always used to be on a timer. That meant that after you spawned it, you'd have to wait a certain amount of time until you get the next one. That's been changed a little bit now. It's still on a timer. And so the, the in-game says 30 seconds, but I believe it's actually 25 seconds. 
Um, but the, crucially, the timer doesn't start until the golem that you used previously dies. So it's similar to how Mordar's tombstone works, where you play the tombstone, you have to wait a certain amount of time until you get the next tombstone. I think it's 35 seconds now, but that timer doesn't start until the tombstone dies. So here, you have to wait until the next golem. So that kind of spaces out the golems. So the idea is you're using these spells to power up her attack and gain these charges, and then you spawn the golem, empower the golem, and then basically rinse and repeat. Now, what do the, uh, the arcane charges do to the golem? Well, as mentioned, it gets a level per charge, and uh, each level gives it 30 health plus 5 damage. Now, that's actually the damage is actually up from what it used to be. It used to be, I think, three damage per level. So it scales damage-wise more than it used to. But, of course, um, that is only against ground minions shorter range. Um, additionally, uh, the golem doesn't get any bonus from spells whilst it's active. So when you spawn it, it gets a charge. It gets a level based on the amount of charges you have. And that's its level until it dies. There's no way you can increase that with regards to using spells whilst it's alive. So there's a few things you want to pay attention to there. Remember, there is a maximum of five charges. So ideally, you want to gain those five charges and then spawn your golem and then start building up more charges. Because if you've already got five charges um, and then you're continually using spells, you're kind of wasting those potential charges. So that's one thing that if you want to take your gameplay to a slightly bit of better level, then you can sort of pay attention to that a little bit. So I think that kind of explains the golem. So one thing you've got to note there is the golem has changed from a unit that can kind of do everything to a unit that's going to have some real weaknesses. For example, it's going to get very outranged and it's going to struggle against air. So it's still going to be tanky. It's still going to be good damage, but it's going to need appropriate support. So that's how the golem has changed. Um, and one thing to mention about the golem uh, one last thing, probably. So the Golem will start at 250 health, doing 30 damage. At perk 1, the maximum Golem can have 400 health and 55 damage. So that's if you're spawning it with 5 Arcane Charges. So that's a pretty stacked 2 mana unit, for sure. And as we'll see later, it can get even stronger. Now, perk 2, the Arcane Missiles, they're not changing. Okay, so if you understand how they work, they're not changing. And uh, perk three, the uh, Zanian Construct. So this changes a couple of things. Firstly, the Golem gains double the bonus from Arcane Sparks. So that means instead of getting one level for each uh, from Arcane Charges, let's get the verbiage correct. Instead of gaining one level per charge, it gains two levels per charge. So remember, you can still only have five Arcane Charges. Now, that means that if you spawn it with five Arcane Charges, it therefore gets 10 levels, so maximum is 550 health and 80 damage. That's uh, just over 60 DPS. So at perk 3, it's a very, very strong unit, but of course it still has its weaknesses. So um, that's kind of the changes that I want to mention. Um, and the, the only other thing actually here is that it reduces at perk 3 the cooldown of the golem and the arcane missiles by 5 seconds, so you get them more quickly. So what does that mean with regards to building a deck for Milloween? Well, let's have a look at a deck that I put together and we'll kind of consider it here. So the main thing to mention or remember is that the Golem can no longer hit air. I know I've said it a lot, but it's really, really crucial. It's a real massive weakness in the, go in the Golem's armory now. So we need to make sure that we build a deck with that in mind because and the reason that's very important is that there was definitely a school of thinking with regards to the old Milloween, is that you could build your deck with a real anti-air deficit because you knew you were going to have that Golem. That was kind of your, I don't see it in my deck building, but I know that's an extra card I'm going to get. Whereas now we need to specifically think about that. So we've got, we haven't gone particularly heavy on the anti-air here, but of course we've got the Unholy Ground, as you can see, which is going to bring air units down to us. So that's really helpful. And we've got a bunch of spells and a, a Kern, Kernaf. To help us out there. So similar Milloween deck, maybe a little bit different, but um, this is what I put together to try. I've had some reasonable success with it. I'd like to show you a replay of uh, a, a ladder game that I had and uh, 
then we can have a look at how it works in action. Okay, so here we have a ladder game against a decent player. He's playing Aper, Avea, Cage Prowler, so a very strong strat, although there has been some nerfs in the latest patch uh, to the Cage Prowler, although you could argue that it's also a buff. And if you're talking about Mana Bankin, Apep, of course, getting a slightly reduced auto attack. Now, Milloween does have these swirls around her. She starts with two, which is kind of, uh, that's kind of a graphical issue. These swirls should indicate the number of arcane charges you have. Um, so when we use our first spell, uh, this should get reset. So you see we have one charge now from the spell that we've used. Trying to shut the Cage Prowler down if we can. Looks like he spawned into it, so he was able to actually prevent that to restriction. So if we just stop this just for a second here, so... We've got three swirls around Milloween. Remember, those are our three arcane charges. They empower our auto attack. And when we spawn our golem, we can see we've got a counter of three on there. They will empower that golem. So what should happen when we spawn the golem? All of these swirls should disappear because it should get reset back down to zero arcane charges. And there you see exactly that happens. So we've got a level 4 golem, which is because we had 4 charges built up from 4 spells. Kurnaf pushing at the top. Kurnaf's great against all these little small units, putting some pressure on the cage prowler as well. The prowler of course taking a little longer to spawn now, and taking less damage to shut down. So as mentioned, he is playing Avea, so his deck will scale into the late game if he can get Avea activated. So we did some decent damage to start off with there. We got a good XP lead. So, so far, so good. Remember with the new Unholy Ground, it only spawns skeletons if there's an enemy present. So you can take a bridge with it like I did there. But you do need to play it carefully and make sure there's stuff available for it to hit. Really going hard with the spells there. Maybe a little bit of overcommittal. But we do, of course, have the stuns from the Jing. Which is really, really good against um, the uh, the Avea because we can stop the activations. And there we have a max level at this point of the game, level five Golem. And I think what you saw I, I did there is I did the Jing. My Golem was already had five charges built up, so I didn't really want to use another spell over above that until I spawned the Golem. So I Jinged, then Golems, then spelled, so we get. Uh, as many arcane charge values as possible. Right, so uh, HP we're a little bit ahead, XP more important probably here, doing okay. So we do have uh, Kurnaf that can of course do those two activations. We don't want to waste them on anything that's kind of uh, irrelevant. So we'll try to put some pressure on here. Not the best value, but so far so good. Nice little Jing juggle there. Keeps the Jing alive just for a little bit, but most importantly, we hold that top bridge. Now, we got some real good DPS at the bottom, but of course, we don't have any anti-air. But we do have Unholy Ground, and that's where it will bring the air down to us. And that helps cover the weakness that we have in the, in the deck with the Golem. And of course, the support, support spells just rip everything away. And we're almost at perk 3 at this point, so going on pretty well. His Avea is activated. There you can see she spawns with the Legionnaires. So suddenly she gets uh, a lot more value. That could change things a lot. But there you see, look at those spells. The su spell support just allowing Kurnaf to shred everything. Bridge Buddies, nice here to grab the bridges. Bridge Buddies is a very strong spell. I do see a lot of people always misplaying it. Just make sure, don't just think of it as a waste of a spell. Use it. Try to get bridges. Try to be smart with them. So again, Unholy Ground, the newest iteration, has the immobility, so it locks everything in place. The Vortex, really good if we can get things underneath the Jing to stun them. And that Golem is hitting real hard. Let's just remind ourselves that Golem hits for 80 damage. Every hit. So it's hitting very hard. 
higher DPS than a cleaver, of course it uh, does its damage in a very different way. So it is more difficult for us to deal with the uh, Avaya at this point in the game. So we, what we're doing here is we're, we're just trying to get to, uh, to Mana Frenzy. I would say this is not sort of like a, a full control deck. But it does have a lot of control element elements, but it also does have a lot of DPS in it as well. So you can do some sort of control aggro if the matchup uh, allows you to, to get that in. Okay, so we really wanted to just make sure we held that top bridge. Sometimes you can't hold both bridges. You just have to commit to one of them. So he's 20 XP behind at the moment. So didn't look at the XP for a little bit, but I think he is coming back. So this is kind of a, we've got to try to hold on until we get to Mana Frenzy. And this is where Unholy Ground is amazing. It will keep everything away from the bridge for a period of time, which in an XP race, it's crucially important. That Berserker Raged Zealot, though, doing massive damage to him. So we're able to control here. We don't have too much health left, so we do have to be careful. But we're very close to Mana Frenzy. We have zero bridges at the moment. Jin comes in and shreds. Hillpuff going to put some pressure on the bottom. At least we've neutralized that bridge. We might not win this fight, but at least it's neutralized. And here the Unholy Ground keeps everything on the other side of the bridge where we can keep it. And uh, this is crucially important. If you're in Mana Frenzy and your opponent's not, and you each have a bridge, then you're in a much better position because you're getting double the XP from that bridge. And of course, the XP is becoming in changed into Mana. And just look at that Golem absolutely murdering everything at the top. So I think people that have suggested that Milloween is dead after this change, I think they may have to reevaluate what they think because I des definitely do not agree with it. And I think this deck and this match might show you um, that Milloween is alive and well. Hopefully she won't empower the cheese like she used to, but hopefully she's a balanced master. But so time will tell, but at this point... It's looking like she's doing a great job. And there we have Borbarad down to 10 HP. And there's the new Milloween getting a great victory. Okay. And that is pretty much all I wanted to show you today. So hopefully you know from this video the changes to Milloween. And what those changes mean with, with regards to how you're building your decks. You still want that spell synergy. You want to build around the spells. You want to get the value out of the spells. But... Um, there's a bit more thinking to it instead of just getting the golem out and spawning and using the spells. You've got to charge, get those charges up, spawn the golem. You also got to make some decisions because remember when you've got those charges built up, your auto attack is really, really strong. So sometimes you might want to delay your golem to keep that empowered auto attack. Just depends what's going on. And then also because we're maxed at five arcane charges, you want to be paying attention to how many charges you've got and you don't ideally want to be using spells over and above that five maximum. So you want to be getting those five, getting that golem out, and then earning those charges again. So anyway, that's been my experience with the uh, the latest Milloween. I've been enjoying playing her. As always, let me know in the comments what you think about these changes. Do you think Milloween is too strong, too weak? Do you think she's in a balanced change, change spot? Do you like where she is? Do you not like where she is? Are you a Milloween main that is changed to something else or vice versa? Always fun to have a discussion about this, especially with some real polarized changes here. Anyway, that's enough from me. If you've been enjoying the content here and you want to keep up to date, we are closing in on 2000 subs. So if you want to hit that sub button and join us, you will be most welcome and most appreciated. That's enough for me. I'm Bad as a Fish. And this, as always, is an awkward wave.